Panix, Panix! Panix! Huh? Oh. Hello. Welcome to Titanium Mine. I just had a... I just had a, a, a nightmare about bunnies. I have no idea why. Anyway, on, on this episode, we're talking about Fist, forged in Shadow Torch. Oh. Oh. Right. That's why. In that game, you play a, a, an anthropomorphic bunny that has a giant mechanical arm on his back. Yeah, that's a thing. When I originally started playing Fist, uh, I did it mostly because I got it for free. But then, after that little caveat, uh, I did it mostly because it was labeled as a Metroidvania. And as many people may be aware, uh, I really love that genre. And I was very excited to see what this one was. Always looking for a good one. And playing a few different ones, maybe we'll talk about those on the show later, but... Fist had a very interesting look and feel to it. I mean, you are a, but a small rabbit, but you have this giant fist on your back. What is all that about? And as you go through the story, you start to realize that this particular bunny is actually uh, a war hero and uh, has uh, this arm that would have been originally part of a larger mech suit that he would have wielded back in the day. And the whole concept of the game is basically that there's this uh, oppressive regime that has come into being after the wars that your lead character has fought in, and now, I mean, you gotta do something about it, right? You gotta stop. Uh, especially the main bad guy of the game, which was once your squad mate, Cicero. And so, in order to do that, you have to kind of traverse the land, go underground, go to these ancient temples, and uncover massive amounts of power. And this is where you get your glorious Metroidvania map. One of my favorite things about, like, the 2D Metroidvanias is just this interlinked map that they create, where you get to go to different biomes that you access throughout the game as you learn new skills. What you find out is that your fist becomes very useful in accessing those new areas because you will get different abilities throughout the course of the game that allow you to do stuff in the game and unlock those areas. So, for instance, after you get your fist, you learn how to do, like, a, a, a downward, like, Captain Falcon punch with your fist, and it can break through some barriers. Later on in the game, though, you get a drill, and this drill has the ability to open certain doors, and eventually gets the ability to uh, propel you underwater, and eventually gets you the ability to smash rocks and stuff underwater. You can't breathe underwater at the very start of the game, but then you get the ability later. Uh, and then also you will get a whip, an electric whip. And this allows you to unlock certain doors and access certain areas and shut off lasers and stuff like that that you couldn't do before. All of these abilities add to your functionality of exploring this world and even backtracking across it. Now, I'm not going to lie. The game looks pretty good, and the characters are pretty fun. They're all, like, anthropomorphic animals, and you even have some hub areas to go to. However, they also make the combat a little frustrating in how difficult it is. And it's not difficult in the, oh, if I learn the attack pattern of the enemies, I'm going to be fine. I just have to get good. It's more difficult in the, the enemy just has a billion different kinds of attacks. Uh, it has a hit area of the entire arena. I don't know when the attacks are coming most of the time. My t attacks that I would need to use to do any significant damage ramp up slower than the enemy can attack me. So, what am I doing here? Just wish for the best, try to hit them with everything that I have, and hope it works out. It's that kind of strategy. And it's not particularly strategic <laughs> at the end, uh, to the point that when you get to the final bosses, I literally just stopped playing. I, was, I, I had tried it several times, and I was like, you know what? 
No. I don't understand why these bosses have so many different abilities and then keep changing it up and have multiple forms over and over. It's unnecessary. It is unnecessary. They even tried to do a thing where your character has their version of, like, Estus flasks, which is carrot juice, and I thought that was cute, but... Okay, so here's an aesthetic thing. You have a few different, uh, like, little gadgets. One of them is a decoy you can throw out. One of them is a rocket launcher, which is probably the most functional thing. You have your carrot juice, you know. And what they do is they attach them onto, if you're using a gamepad, they attach them onto the D-pad. And so you can, you can access them by pushing them onto the D-pad. And then, after you have accessed them, you have signed them, you press the trigger button to activate them. And the entire time, I just started thinking to myself, why would I bother doing that? Why couldn't I have just... There's only four gadgets in the game. And there's four D-pad buttons. So why couldn't I just push the D-pad button and activate the gadget? It would save me time. And I wouldn't have to use a whole other system. So when you're in combat and you think, oh, I need to get the carrot juice, you might be thinking, oh, I'm just going to tap my, you know, my trigger button, only to realize, uh-oh, I've got a problem here. I'm on the rocket launcher. I'm not on my carrot juice. And, mind you, the ability bar of how many uses you have is tied to the whole thing. So, if you decide, oh, I really need carrot juice, you can't use the rocket launcher. You have to use the carrot juice. And so, if you end up depleting it with something else, you can't use the other thing until you get more uses of it back, like ammunition. Why didn't you just use the D-pad? I could have just, you know, it would have trained my brain, like, up up so that I can get my, my carrot juice, down so that I can get, you know, my rocket launcher or whatever. Because I kind of thought that's how Souls-likes worked when they had that sort of mechanic, and it worked okay, so why, why couldn't we just do it here? It feels like, it feels like an unnecessary step. But then again, there's a lot of uh, unnecessary steps in the game. Uh, you will get special maneuvers. In fact, that's the majority of what you get in the upgrade tree throughout the game. And uh, pulling them off is sort of hit or miss. Uh, press up and B if you want to do like a, an upward slam dunk. And you'll do it, and it's like, oh, no, I guess I wasn't hitting the right conditions. Like, maybe I was slightly in the air, or I was slightly off to the side, or I was... I was actually, like, moving to the side a little bit and up, so I didn't do it. I did a different attack that is if I push over and the button, and now I, I, I jet through the air, which is cool, but not what I really needed to do at that time. Uh, so there's, there's a little bit of frustration that comes from the control scheme when you get into combat, which is unfortunate because I think that the exploration controls of the game work pretty well, but uh, yeah, the, the combat is really where it just uh, seems to lose the plot a little bit. I also would have liked to see some more uh, ability to, to go throughout the map once you've unlocked certain areas. Um, fast travel isn't a necessity in every single game, but it does help out in Metroidvanias, and I feel like the way that they did it here was just kind of piecemeal. Like, there's a subway, and the subway will take you to, like, three different areas, but then you also have, like, these hamster ball shoots, and those access a whole different range of other areas. There's no, like, one centralized system. There's, like, three or four different subsystems to let you travel from one area to the other. Uh, it might seem interesting and cool and maybe help with world building a little bit, but I don't really see what the advantage of that was over having just one system that I could utilize to get to many, many different areas of the map at any time. 
especially with Metroidvania maps, because you have so many ins and outs to, to get around and traverse. Uh, a few more spots and one centralized system would have been very, very useful there. Overall, I mean, Fist was a game that held my attention far longer than I thought it would. I didn't necessarily think that I was going to like it very much. It felt very gimmicky out at the front. But the way that they developed that world definitely fit a style that I enjoyed. And I think that there's something to it. I do. I just feel like it didn't get quite as fleshed out and quite as balanced as it could have been. And one of the reasons why I feel that way is because of the game that I'm going to talk about now as an alternative, which is a much older game, but boy, I kept thinking about it a lot when I was playing Fist, and that's Shadow Complex. Shadow Complex is quite a game. Uh, it is a, a 2D Metroidvania-style game. Actually, it's a 2.5. There's arenas where you'll be firing off your gun, but uh, the enemy will kind of, like, move backwards and over to the side, and then you'll be able to, like, you'll, you'll automatically, like, aim your gun off into the distance to give it a sense of depth while you're going through. Uh, and the upgrade process and the way that the map works and even the upgrades that you get like oh i can't go underwater until i get a mask and then you get the mask and like the challenges that you have to go through and everything boy it felt a lot like fist like like the look and the feel and the the atmosphere and the upgrade process even tones of the story uh really did feel very similar uh, but i think that uh, Shadow Complex did a better job. It's a it's a great game. It's an older game, but it was uh it was really one of the best versions of like that 2D Metroid that I had played at the time. That wasn't Metroid. Uh, you get some great upgrades. You get a lot of the classic weaponry, like you know your rocket launcher and stuff that you're used to uh, from you know, like Metroid. And, uh, and, and it just, it worked really well, felt a little bit cinematic, and had a great pacing. Like, it just, it, it kept going without really slowing you down a lot, uh, and, and continued to, like, ramp up the challenges and utilize the different abilities that you got throughout the game uh, to great effect. So, if you get a chance, and you want to play an older game, and you can find it, I would suggest trying to play Shadow Complex. Fist is fine, but Shadow Complex, I think, is a much better game. All right. Not gonna fall asleep. Bunnies haunt my nightmares. Bunny Kruger. That's, what, that's what's running through my head nowadays. As long as I stay awake, I don't turn into a hopping maniac. Uh-oh. Run! Run or hop! <laughs> <laughs>